Welcome back to Hannity. So Donald Trump continues to surge in three brand new polls in the brand new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll. Donald Trump is on top with 25 percent. That is the highest level of support he has received in that particular poll since he entered the 2016 race. Dr. Ben Carson is second with 22 percent, followed by Marco Rubio, who has 13. Ted Cruz, Jeb Bush, Carly Fiorina, all in single digits. We have a brand new CNN ORC poll. Also more good news for Donald Trump. He's in first place with 27 percent of the vote. Dr. Carson comes in second with 22 percent, followed by Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, Mike Huckabee and Rand Paul, all in single digits. Also, Trump has a commanding lead in a new Monmouth University poll. He's leading Dr. Carson by double digits. He has 28 percent in that poll. And we have a new morning console poll, which had you at 40, what, 1 percent, 51 percent if if you look at uh, those that look at you as their second choice. And Donald Trump, the 2016 frontrunner. What do you make of these polls? I know you talk a lot about the polls, but they have been steady. They have been consistent. And now Byron York has a piece out. And there was another piece this week that says, finally, the establishment believes you can win. And Byron York outlines how the establishment pre prepares to go after you as not being a conservative. Are you ready to deal with that? And what will you do? Well, I am. Look, I, I have meetings in New Hampshire. We have thousands and thousands of people, six, seven, eight thousand people every time. I went to Dallas. We had 20,000 in Mark Cuban's arena. It was an amazing evening in Alabama. We had 35,000, Oklahoma, 20,000. Every place we go in Iowa, we have thousands and thousands overflow crowds. People are tired of being ripped off in our country. We're run by people that are incompetent. They don't know what they're doing. Every nation is beating us. Obamacare is a disaster. Our Iran deal is horrible. It was written by it was done by people that don't know what they're doing. I mean, they don't know what they're doing. And people see what's happening. And look, they know I do things properly. I do the right thing. And they just like what I'm saying. What, I mean, it's, but when the it's Republicans, all you can say. the establishment now thinks you can win. And what they're planning and what they're telegraphing they're planning is a barrage of ads in early states. M huge buys, millions and millions of dollars, trying to chip away at your conservative credentials with, with primary voters. What do you think is the best way to respond to that? But they're not buying. The candidates aren't buying the ads. The people that are buying the ads are the special interests, the donors, the people that are lobbyists. You know, you have lobbyists. I know half the lobbyists. I used to contribute to the lobbyists. Who knows more about a lobbyist than me? I know the good ones and the bad ones. But the lobbyists are going crazy because when they come to me, say they want me to do something for all these companies, even though it's not in the best interest of the United States, I'm not going to do it. When the special interests tell me to do something that's adverse to the people of the United States. I'm not going to do it because I'm not Will taking their money. Will you fight back then with These your own people, ads and your own money? Sure, I'll fight back. Sure, of course I'm going to fight. I always fight back. I have to fight back. I guess Otherwise, that's a dumb I wouldn't question. be leading when every poll. Why does Donald Trump not fall no, back? No, but I wouldn't be yeah. leading every poll. But, but, John, you have to understand, these people have hundreds of millions of dollars that they've given to these politicians, and the politicians are puppets for them. They're just puppets. No. With me, I'm going to do what's right for the country. We have $19 trillion in debt. We're going to get the debt paid. We're going to do things right. We're not going to let China rip us off anymore. It's, it's enough already. You know that last year we had an imbalance with China of $450 billion. Who can, who can stand that? You can't do that. And this has gone on for years and years, and nobody does anything because they have lobbyists, they have special interests, and I'm going to represent the people. We're going to make this country so great and so strong. But with that... A lot of money is going to be spent. And I just hope when people are watching this phony ads, you know, all of these phony ads that are going to be put out, that they're going to understand it's not the candidates. It's all of these special interests, John, that want to not have a guy like Trump because they're going to be out of business. For them, this is the art of political war for them. And I think they're serious about it because they're talking about their power going away. Uh, of the three Democrats, it looks like Biden's getting in the race. So of the three Democrats, Biden, Hillary, Bernie Sanders, if you win the nomination, is there any one you prefer going up against? Well, I don't think Sanders is going to get there, frankly. And I don't mind going against Hillary's record. I think I'd beat her. You saw the, the various polls on myself against Hillary. I just beat her in Florida. A poll came out today where I beat her pretty easily in Florida. Uh, I beat her nationwide. I don't mind going against Hillary. And, you know, Biden is right now, he's got his little period of time where he's popular. As soon as he gets in, he'll get beaten up very badly. He's done this three or four times. He's lost every time. So I don't mind going against him at all. 
I don't I don't want to pick a favorite, to be honest. I think I might have a favorite. But if you go by Hillary's record, I should win very easily. Have, have you given any thought, if you win the nomination, three people that you would consider to be your vice president? I have given thought, but I don't want to discuss it. It's just too early. I have to get there first. I, you know, I don't like talking about it. You have so many people. They don't win. They don't know how to win. I don't want to talk about anything. I do know how to win, but that's so far okay. down the road. I will say I do respect some of the people that I'm running against, and I respect many of the people. You have many good Republicans out there that could really help and be terrific. And we're going to unify the Republican Party. We're going to unify it and make it strong, and we're going to win. We're not going to do what Romney did last time, where he should have won an election and he lost. We're going to unify the Republican Party, and we're going to win. I heard you were supposed to be on Jimmy Kimmel tonight. Did something happen? No, I have a political event, but I'm going to do his show in two weeks. I have a big political event, which I can't skip. And I told him, I said, you know, I have this event. I can't skip it, but I will be doing it in two weeks when I'm out in Los Angeles. You know, there was an article that came out about Hillary. She has these big hearings coming up about Benghazi. Uh, we know that Ambassador Stevens requested security before it was denied. We know that during the, the attack that there was a stand down order given because I interviewed people that were there. They told me personally. And we know they made up this story about a YouTube video and a spontaneous demonstration. We learned that about her. What do you think about the hearings? And there was another article that came out earlier today in the Washington Free Beacon that she paid men $16,000 more a year than women. What's your reaction to those two things with her? Well, I have to tell you, I was really looking forward to the hearings, but then you had a congressman, Republican, go against Trey Gowdy and all of the people, as you know, and then you had a whistleblower come out, so that hurt. That was not exactly positive. And then yesterday, I watched Trey, who I do respect. I think he's a terrific guy, but he seemed to be doing a big pivot. He said, well, this isn't about Hillary Clinton. You know, I'm pretty good at figuring this stuff out. And he seemed to be doing, Sean, I'm sure, I'm sure you saw it, he seemed to be doing a big pivot away from Hillary Clinton. And I was trying to figure out what that was all about. So you may not be as happy as you think with these hearings. I just don't know. The hearings, I was looking forward to them. But with all that's happening, and I was surprised that he pivoted away so much from Hillary. He said, these hearings are not about her. Actually, we want to discuss other people much more so. And it sounded like he was sort of pulling away from going after her. So I'm going to have to see what the hearings are all about. All right, Mr.